This is Kingdom Sound TV. You are welcome. On this channel, we will share content of our father and mentor, Apostle Joshua Selman. As you listen, remain ever blessed. Thank you. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, again we ask that you will help us, grant us understanding. Understanding that produces results. We pray in the name of Jesus that you will edify us in no small way tonight. And let Jesus be glorified. Amen and amen. Please be seated. Again, let me honor your pastor, Pastor Kingsley. He's not here, but let's honor him in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. You know, when the woman of God was just leading the brief prayer session, she, she, she touched on a scripture that is very important. Jesus himself was teaching and he said, the sower went to sow. So he had a seed. The sower was the Lord himself. And then he said that he sowed and it fell on different kinds of soils. Praise the Lord. And he said that even among the soils that produced, they produced some 30 fold, some 60 fold, and some a hundred fold. So even for those who got the results, they got it in different degrees. Hallelujah. And it's my prayer in the name of Jesus that this would be hearts that produce a hundredfold return. Mark chapter 4. Mark chapter 4. The brief session that we have tonight will be a charge to bless our hearts and then I just sense in my spirit that somewhere in this meeting we'll have the opportunity to just pray and speak over our lives in the name of Jesus Christ. Verse 35 And the same day when the even was come, he said unto them, Jesus is speaking, let us pass over to the other side. This is Jesus now. A desire to advance, a desire to move to the next level of his ministry. And he encouraged his disciples with him and said, let us pass over to the other side. And when they had sent away the multitudes, 36 now, they took him even as he was in the ship. And there were also with him other little ships. Then a tragedy happened. And there arose a great storm of wind. And the waves beat into the ship so that it was now full. And he was in the hinder part of the ship asleep on a pillow. And they awake him and say unto him, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased and there was great calm. 40. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? How is it that ye have no faith? And they feared exceedingly and said unto one another, What manner of man is this, that even the wind and the sea obey him? Hallelujah. Now the Bible is giving us a very interesting scenario here. Jesus is on his way to the other side. And all of a sudden the Bible says, As they were going, there rose a great storm of wind. Now, storms are made up of two components. One is visible. One is invisible. Please follow me carefully. Every storm is made up of water and wind. You are able to see the water and see it boisterous. But that water is empowered by wind that you may not be able to see. And that the storm arose on account of their desire for advancement. 
if they did not desire to move forward, there would be no need for any issue of a storm. It's amazing that many things that happen to us are not proofs that we are retrogressing. In fact, they are proofs that we are moving forward. The storm came because there was motion to move to the other side. There are many people who do not have storms in their lives and you think they are free. It's proof they are not going anywhere. It's proof they are not doing anything. They would have settled back and just resorted to remaining there and there would be no issue of storm. But the storm arose because they took the risk to go by sea to the other side. Are we together now? Many believers need to have a reorientation about what we call challenges and problems because sometimes the narrative we have about challenges is that um, the reason why the devil attempts to attack me is simply because I may not be a Christian or my faith you know we have this narrative the moment you see people trusting God and having to push through storms the usual narrative is that they do not have faith and here is the Bible correcting our perception that Jesus, your Jesus, is on his way to the other side so that a Decapolis will be healed. A Decapolis will be saved. Remember, as you will be learning, that the storm was not about Jesus. The storm was not even about the disciples. The storm was about the destiny of ten cities. So that the attack that many times we face is not about us. You are too small a motivation for the devil to just invest his energy in the, There is a bigger cause. Are we together now? There arose a storm of wind. Suddenly, a situation that was at ease became boisterous because the Savior was on his way to save a madman who would bring ten cities. The whole story was not about Jesus. It was not even about the disciples. You would think they did something wrong. But there were spirits. Listen carefully. Do you know that when they went over to the other side, the first person they met was the demoniac who told the demon Jesus was coming. The spirits that controlled that territory, the gatherings, that had kept that man in bondage and kept the city in bondage. The economy of that city was dependent on their fraternity with those spirits. That was why the moment the spirits went, their economy also went down. Look at everything that happened just because Jesus arrived there. Are we together? Then the Bible said that a storm of wind very boisterous the water began to come into the boat and the disciples were afraid and they went and met jesus sleeping and they woke him and said master wake up we're in trouble you are the one who brought us in this trouble take responsibility for the situation we are in isn't it amazing that sometimes when you get midway between your journey you you get angry you look back at those who motivated you your pastor who prayed for you the word he gave you you are angry if you did not motivate me i will not get into this marriage if you didn't motivate me i wouldn't get into this business i was minding my business you came in with a word that made me uncomfortable with my situation it's amazing that when we face challenges we usually look for who to blame and in this case they found Jesus. They attempted to manage the storm. And when they found out they did not have the ability to manage the storm, they went to Jesus. They didn't say, Jesus, save us. They said, carest thou not. So they are, they are rebuking Jesus here. Carest thou not that we perish. Pastor, are you aware that I'm looking for one billion naira? I came to you and I showed you a dream. And you told me God said 2021 is my year of advancement that I should move. Now I've started a project and midway there doesn't seem to be any help. I was, I was all right. Listen to me. Storms are very, very important tests in the life of believers. Now I know that this may not be a, a very popular teaching. But I'm showing you how people move from where they are. 
In fact, if you are truly making progress, you can validate your movement by the presence of storms. If your advancement does not send a signal enough to call the attention of the gate of hell to say, who is this making this progress? Many times, our ease is proof that we are not making progress. If you sit at home and you do not get in your car to go from one place to the other, you have no business with traffic. People experience traffic because they are moving. They, while the traffic is on, there are onlookers who are just watching. They are not doing anything necessarily. There arose a boisterous storm. Now, please watch this. There is a lesson to learn here. I'm dealing with the issue of the storm that every storm is made up of two elements number one the wind and number two water are we together now yes the water is the obvious one that you can see but that that water is being powered by wind that you cannot see behind every physical problem look up please behind every physical challenge hear me there are spirits and spiritual forces that empower them behind situations and circumstances that seem to defy solutions there are spiritual forces that empower situations empower men empower conditions to be hostile against those who are making progress in this kingdom so if your interpretation of challenges is just the individuals the physical actors you've gotten it wrong Jesus knew that there was more than water. His concern was not even the water. When he was about to rebuke it, he said, Peace be still. He was not just speaking to the water. He was speaking to the spirits that were manipulating the wind to make the water boisterous. Behind every challenge, there are spirits that are behind it. The same way behind every progress and exploit, the Holy Ghost is also behind it. People do not just make progress because they are well-intentioned. It takes an agency of the spirit to move people. Are we together now? This is very, very important. Paul, it was Apostle Paul who said, I desired once and again to come to you. I desire to move from this location to come and be a blessing to you. He said, but Satan hindered us. Satan is still in the business of attempting to hinder men hinder men from stepping into strategic relationships hinder men from stepping into strategic alliances opening them up to opportunities that can lift them and here comes the manifestation of spirits but in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare over someone tonight that every force that stands your way here at this conference in the name of jesus may it be silenced forever hallelujah isn't it amazing that is when you make up your mind and say in the name of jesus i will be a giver like never before it's time to move to the other side suddenly things begin to happen and you're finding out that your children are getting mysteriously sick and all this is happening and people are calling from home and say care us not you see it now and whilst that is happening you're saying lord but i made a commitment to love you and serve you just when you make up your mind that I will be a faithful worker, I'm going to give my best to God, my best to this church, suddenly situations begin to arise. Learn to read the writings on the wall. It is not about you. It's about where you are going. When you focus on yourself, you will be misled. The devil looks broad and he knows that if this woman becomes a CEO, I know how many believers will be employed in this company. If this woman becomes a CEO, I know. So the moment he was there in the board meeting while they were discussing you and the moment your name came, he said, no, this woman calls upon the name of the Lord. We know the implication of her lifting. Suddenly a storm arises. Be careful when you talk about people who are going through things. It's not necessarily about them. Many times it's about where they are going. It's about a salvation that you may even be part of. Sir, why are you suddenly in trouble? Why is your company seeming to know stuff? You've always been an intelligent fellow. I know you as a skilled person. What is this disfavor all around your life? It's a storm. 
Are we blessed? Just when they are about to give you an, an appointment that will put you in a position where people will model your life, your children begin to go haywire. Where is this coming from? Learn to interpret the writings on the wall. Many of the attacks in our lives, I tell you, they are not about us. It is about something that is bigger than you. Have you not noticed that when seasons are about to change, it looks like you, you almost know that a season has come to an end and another one is about to start because strange from, it looks like there are attacks from nowhere. All of a sudden, your car doesn't seem to work. Everything seems to annoy you. Just when you want to give God praise, your child comes with a report, a result an evil report, you hold that result and look at it and say, what is this? Have I wasted my money? Then you suddenly begin to feel a pain somewhere and say, in the name of Jesus, I, and, and it looks like you are overwhelmed. And sometimes you can turn to God and say, carest thou not. Is that not what we say? Don't blame the disciples. Carest thou not. God, I have served you. I'm faithful. My seeds are speaking in the house of God. Why are you asleep allowing me to go through these things? Why are you asleep allowing my children to go haywire? Why are you asleep allowing my life to not make progress? What is it about a job that you cannot give me, oh God? What is it about lifting that you cannot give me? And yet Jesus is lying down quietly. It's amazing. They were not interested in his presence. They were interested in in his speaking because he was there you would think they would have been comforted that his presence was there with them <laughs> they said jesus it's not your presence that we are looking for wake up you are here but wake up we need you to wake up and do something do something that our senses can relate with and jesus said if the boat turns will it not turn with me too why don't you keep quiet and watch what my power can do the first thing he rebuked was their faith. He said, there is something about my presence you do not know. You want me to relate in a way that your mind and your senses can find comfort in. Draw strength from the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Ah, someone prophesy to yourself that in the midst of my situations, Jesus is still in the boat. I know my home looks like it's in disarray. November, December seemed like nothing would happen, but Jesus is still in that boat. Keep talking while he's in my boat. My security is that even if I don't hear his voice, his presence is still with me. He may not always speak, but I find comfort in the fact that Jesus is still in the boat. Please sit down. There are many times when he's with you, but may not speak. But the carnal man does not understand the power of divine presence. You would want to hear him so that you will find comfort. And Jesus said, Learn this, your faith, your conviction. I am not a man. I am the almighty, the master over storms. If I am in your boat, no matter how it is rocking, find rest. They were angry that Jesus was at rest. They expected him to panic like them. Isn't it amazing how, how you find out that when people are at rest, sometimes it annoys you because you can't understand what is the basis of that rest. Are you not aware that there is a pandemic? Are you not aware that people's jobs, it looks like they are going to downsize? Where is your panic? Let's be humans together. And someone tells you, I have found rest. The Lord is my light and my salvation. This is the basis of my rest. And sometimes the rest of faith can annoy faithless people. We're discussing storms. Jesus is asleep. He's in that boat. The word of God. The logos of God. That created the wind. That created the rain. Created the sea. And now he's asleep. And because he's not speaking listen every time god is silent learn to discern the voice of silence there is a, silence itself is a language there is something god is saying the moment god keeps quiet find rest he's telling you i am well aware 
But the carnal man would always want God say something to me and he's quiet. Lord speak about my job and he's quiet. Speak about my family. He's quiet. Speak about the next level. He's quiet. Carest thou not. Lord carest thou not. Are you not aware that I need to pay my rent? Are you not aware that I just lost my job? My integrity serving you is what has brought this tragedy to my life. It's painful when good things lead you into trouble. They were innocently following the master. It was their loyalty to Jesus that got them into that trouble. It was not rebellion. They were not rebels. He called on them. Look at, they were holding his hand to help him in ministry. And now they are in trouble. How do you respond when your sincere desire, when your love for God, it was your coming to church that landed you this trouble? There are battles you had no business fighting if you were not a serious Christian. But now that you've made up your mind that in this entire idol worshipping family, here comes a voice that will lift up the name of the Lord. Then a storm arises. If I understand when you go through tragedy because of lack of wisdom or carelessness or irresponsibility. That's fine. But what happens when storms arise because of truth? What happens when storms arise because of your commitment to God? Ask Joseph what led him to prison. Ask Jesus what led him to the cross. Ask the apostles what led them to prison. There are times that both the good and bad meet at the same place. In the prison cell, Joseph and the wine press are met at the same place. At the cross, both the criminals and Jesus. Be careful when you enter. There are times. Oh goodness. There are times that life will bring you to the same location where lazy people are. And you are wondering, what am I doing here? I'm a hardworking person. What am I doing here? I shouldn't be poor. I shouldn't go through this. I sincerely put money in a business hoping it will lift me. Now it's brought me to the same condition where lazy people are. Stones. Is God blessing us tonight? This is a word from the Lord to help you interpret the happenings in your life. It's embarrassing when you find yourself where you should not be. Joseph, what are you doing in the prison? Only criminals stay here. A man who has a covenant with God. The son of Jacob. What are you doing here? Jesus, you are the son of the living God. What are you doing naked on the tree? And he's silent. And Satan said, you would have bowed down to me. I gave you a chance. I bought that destiny. And you would have. I, I gave you an opportunity. I came to you and I said, bow to me. And I will give you the kingdoms of this world. It was your determination to get to the other side. You are so desperate to save men. You are so desperate to save them. You are willing to die. Now look at you. The Lamb of God. The Bible calls it the hidden wisdom of God. That the princes of this world did not know. If Satan had known the drama that was happening in the cross. He would bring Jesus down from that cross. It was the storm that, let me tell you this, every time storms happen, look well, there is something God is doing. He's using those storms sometimes to shield you. It was the killing of the children that took Moses to the palace where he was trained to become a mighty person. If he was not hidden in the palace, he would have died. So on one hand, while it was Causing other people to die. Moses found his way. It was the hunger that came upon the entire world. That took Joseph and his brothers to Egypt. Where eventually they found refuge. Storms may look strange. But they have an advantage in them. They teach you lessons. Storms can give you stamina and power. So that what you were afraid of yesterday. You are not afraid of it tomorrow. Have you watched yourself go through, when you see this, you say, I know. You came in 2017, I cried. You will not see my tears again. There, 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 listen, there are times in life where you become so fortified. While you are greeting people, hallelujah, how are you? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And someone says, sir, I hear that you just lost your job. I hear that your wife is sick. I hear that your car just spoiled. You say you are right. 
So why the joy? You say, I have learned by experience that every time storms come, I shouldn't focus on the storm. I should verify whether Jesus is in that boat. If he's in that boat, find rest. If he's in that boat, find rest. Are we blessed? Can I tell you this? There are messages that apply to certain people and doesn't apply to others. This is the message that in your lifetime, you must need this sermon. No matter how lazy or serious you are, you will need this sermon. Life will test you. Provided you are going to move to the other side, I give you a guarantee by the name of the Lord, storms will arise. It's true. I'm not a prophet of doom. I'm going to pray for you shortly. But this is the truth. So I'm teaching you the dynamics of managing storms until you emerge victorious. He said, now thanks be to God who causes us always to triumph. Hallelujah. So finally they get Jesus to wake up. And he says, what's going on here? And he said, you better join us in managing this. We've exhausted our skills. Storms reveal the limitation of your power and your ability. You see, because the pride of men on the strength of their achievement, sometimes it takes storms to bring you back to your knees. Because you will not, many of us on the strength of your obvious achievements, it will, it will not be easy to allow Jesus take the center stage. The disciples exhausted their options. If they had a solution, I assure you they will not wake Jesus. So there are times that God steps back to give you an opportunity to see how limited you are. So that it is that storm that brings you back. Remember you stopped praying when the promotion came. Remember you didn't have time for Bible study again. When your wife woke you, you said it's well. And something happened now that money could not solve. That intellect could not solve. And then you had to go back again and say, Jesus, I confess my weakness. I confess my limitations. Take your place. When Jesus arose, he said, now that you have acknowledged me, now that you have come to a point where you see that I am the master of the storm, that your peace is derived from me. He said, peace be still. This is the master speaking. It's amazing that 10 years captivity can come to an end the moment the master wakes up and says, peace be still. Can I tell you this? You know you are a Christian not just by the breakthroughs you are receiving. There are certain attributes the world cannot have. One of it is the peace of God. Not just peace with God, the peace of God. The hallmark of the benefits of your relationship with God is peace. The peace of God. He said, peace I give you. My peace I live with you. Not as the world gives. Peace. Be still. He rebuked the spirit. These spirits were watching. Let's stop Jesus. Let's stop all these people from getting to the other side. And Jesus gets up. There was a drama there. Most times we don't learn from the storm. We focus on the victory and what happened. And now I'm bringing you back. To, let's look at what happened in that storm. The humiliation of the flesh happened in that storm. I know by my strength, I am the best staff in this company. And when you read scriptures like, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed. It doesn't make sense on the strength of, I mean, your room is full of accolades, full of all kinds of things. And God says, this is not so. I do not come into your life as an addition. I come into your life as the, the life giving factor. And so if you think I am an extra luggage you are carrying, I will step back with honor. I love you. My presence will still be there. But there is a condition for hearing my voice. The condition for hearing my voice is that you must be willing to keep quiet and draw back. The voice of God is expensive. Let me tell you this. The voice of God is expensive because when he does speak, no matter what stands before you, it must give way. So when he keeps quiet, he knows how easy it is to get that solution. He will not waste that situation. He silences because he's working on you. Listen, I'm speaking prophetically to someone. It does not cost God anything. Prime, listen, people slept as prisoners and woke up the next day as prime ministers. When God speaks, 
things change. So when he's silent, discern the dealing that his silence is bringing in your life. His silence can mean work on your character. Where you are going will not require this version of you. You need to work on yourself. The promotion is true. You have seen it in dreams and visions. But this version of you cannot be exalted to that position. His silence can mean learn to acknowledge me. Proverbs 3 verse 5 to 7. Trust in the Lord. The Bible says with all your heart. It says and lean not on your own understanding. He knows you have understanding. He said lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways it says acknowledge him. And he shall direct your path. The next verse says. Um, what It says in verse, in verse 7. It says be not wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and turn away from evil. There is the kind of wisdom that achievement brings to you. Read your Bible and see people who declared their rebellion against God. And they had results to show for it. God stepped back and their lives went down. And in that state, they acknowledged the God of heaven once again. Storms. The lessons that they teach. Because you see, there are levels when God leaves you without the training of the storm. It can destroy you. We are humans, so oh. there are levels of honor. There are levels of, of, I prayed a prayer many years, ma. And I told the Lord, I said, Lord, may I never know the full extent of my impact. I know that it can destroy. Just give me a token. Let me just know I'm blessing lives. I don't want to know how far. And God answered that prayer. Can I tell you this? For as long as you are human, wearing flesh and blood, the uploads of men will keep having an effect on you. And sometimes the miracle of storms bring your life back to balance. They remind you that you are human. They remind you that you need God. They remind you that your dominion is not absolute dominion. It's a derived dominion. Derived from a relationship. It reminds you that the, the central focus of your life is the Lord Jesus Christ. More than the destination you are going. It reminds you that if God does not wake up over your life, you will not arrive there. Even though you are seeing it already. Hallelujah. Let us go to the other side. And there was a training. They didn't know that they were enrolling in a school. A school of wisdom. A school of character. A school of power. They thought they entered a boat just to go to the other side. And Jesus said, join me. Guys, one day you will be my apostles. I will not be here. I need to mentor you and I need to train you. One time Jesus was speaking to the people, his disciples. And Peter began to talk to him about his not dying. Satan came to use the compassion of Peter. Satan does not use only evil. He can use good to destroy. He used Peter's compassion. Jesus, you can't go to the cross. And Jesus looks at him and says, Satan, get thee behind me. And Peter said, me? He said, Peter, Satan desired to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith, here it is again, faith fails not. It says, and when you are strengthened, use this same formula. When you are converted, strengthen your brethren. That means when you see them, look beyond what they are doing and discern what spirit is operating through them. Because sometimes the kindness of people can stop you from moving forward. They can love you too much to allow you pass through certain things. Their compassion can be used by the devil to stop you from rising. Your relatives can love you too much. They say, look, I, I can't stand seeing you go through this. So that you can discern that even though my well-meaning mother, my well-meaning father loves me so much. I love them so much, but this is not the voice of God. When you are strengthened, converted, strengthen your brethren. Are we together? Let me hurry up so we can pray. Now he rebukes the wind and the waves. And the Bible says there was perfect stillness. As soon as they get to gathering, they meet this madman waiting for them already. That was the spirit that was causing that storm. They meet this madman 
And Jesus looks at him. And now they begin to negotiate. Do not send us out of this region. You have come to bring salvation. Keep us here. Jesus rebukes them. Watch what happened. As soon as Jesus rebuked them, they went and entered a swine and people lost their businesses, lost jobs, simply because Jesus arrived and certain spirits were dispelled. The man who was healed and delivered, the Bible says he single-handedly went to a decapolis and brought people to Jesus. If they did not take the risks to move, do you know the same energy it takes to go back is the same energy it takes to continue? The same energy it takes to say, I'm tired of this business. God is speaking to someone. You are midway and you can look back and go back and feel honorable for a while. Or you can make up your mind, let them laugh while I move forward. Let them comment while I move forward. The miracle that storms bring in the life of believers. The Bible says, count it all joy, my brethren. When you go through diverse temptations, are we Bible students? Knowing this, that means let this knowledge give you stability. That the trying of your faith produces patience. And that let patience complete its work. I'm speaking to someone because in the midst of this conference, while everybody is laughing and jumping, you are crying. And say, oh Lord, let the, let the ministers that come to preach, let someone be able to discern what I'm going through and bring a word. In addition to this, it is true that you will laugh this year for sure, but discern what God is doing. His silence is not weakness. No, there is a lesson there. The last time he blessed you, you forgot him. You were so carried away by the accolades of men and he stood watching. And remember, the law is that in all your ways you acknowledge him. So his love and his mercy. Is it not in your Bible that he chastises those he loves? There is a formula. There is a non-negotiable condition for the making of great men. Among the training process is going through these storms. Not even Jesus was exempted from it. The way to the throne is the cross hallelujah it is why paul said let no man trouble me i didn't jump classes in the spirit there is a scar that testifies that i passed through the training of the spirit how do you become a compassionate giver when you do not know what it means to be in lack let me tell you how god trains us Many times, the area of your victory and strength will be your area of challenge. Where death ends is also where resurrection starts. They all start in the grave. Resurrection starts in the grave right there. God wants you to become a kingdom financier. I assure you, you will taste of what it means to be in lack. Even if you have money in your account, he will give you an instruction one day. He will not give you an instruction to sow the money they gave you free. He will not touch you. He will wait for the one you got as rewards for your business. That your emotions are connected to. Then he will say, sow it. And he will bind and cast that spirit and he will speak again. And ask you to sow it. And sometimes he can ask you to sow it over something you don't believe in. He's testing you. His last treasurer disappointed him. He will not take chances. If you want him to trust you, he will have to train you and build you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So while you are giving like a madman, you are wondering, everybody is looking at you and saying, I, I, I used to think that you are okay, but now I'm suspecting that something is happening. And you say, Lord, are you seeing them? He keeps quiet. There is a training it's important for people to witness when you go through storms because they will be the ones to validate you that you pass through correctly sometimes when God seems to embarrass you openly rejoice because it's a track record tomorrow people will say no way you don't talk about this woman she, she, it was not just a political position I saw her walk through the pain Lord you seem so far. Joseph so much and quickly rescued him out of the well he would have gone back home a victorious son but never a prime minister and the destiny of Egypt there were spirits that were following that young boy 
God, why does it look like I'm the black sheep in my family? No, you are not the black sheep. You are the one who has been marked. The realm of the spirit knows they are watching you. Why is it that it was difficult for me to get to school? Why can't I have a normal life? I tell you this, great people do not have normal lives. It is true. So while you are in the well, rejoice. In a dry well. And then you get to Potiphar's house. Rejoice. You find yourself in the prison and you are wondering, what am I doing here? Only criminals come here. Why should the son of covenant be here? But it was in the prison that the miracle began to happen. If he ran away from the prison, he will also run away from the throne. Huh. Was it not at the backside of the mountain? Moses literally ran out of Egypt. And while he was at the backside of the mountain, tending the sheep of his father-in-law Jethro, suddenly he sees a bush that is burning and yet is not consumed. And he said, I will turn to see this great sight. And when God saw that he turned aside, he said, Moses, take off your shoes. For where thou standest is holy ground. Be careful when complacency looks comfortable. Be careful when retreating looks better and cheaper and more convenient. Champions continue. It takes stamina in the spirit to continue. You are in school and you don't even know where your school fees will come from. And you are almost there. And the devil says you wasted your school fees. You would have started a business with it. And it looks nice. But while you cry and you are washing cars, your classmates look at you and laugh. And God is saying, I am training you how to serve. Because it is only servants who are on horses. It's a mystery. Most times... The area where you will be a blessing to men, that area, there are things that will pass. You will have to go through. It's called compassion. The ability to be touched with the feelings of people's infirmity. When you go through poverty and pain and lack, when you become a kingdom financier, you are emotionally connected to your assignment. I've gone through several things in my life as a man of God. Sometimes when you see me minister to people, there are times that I stand before people and there are impressions possible situations I have to draw from the archive of my own experience when a family comes and says we need breakthrough if you are too innocent there is nothing to relate the power of God comes through the well of compassion there has to be something in your life that can touch you over that situation that is why most often than not when you come out of storms you don't come alone you come out with an anointing that delivers others too a woman who has been trusting God for instance for the fruit of the womb I tell you the day she gives birth is not only children that come out it's an anointing any woman she prays for from that time will also receive that miracle are we blessed I came tonight by the spirit lending my voice with your pastor and his wife to interpret to you the happenings in your life that while men say there is a casting down he teaches you to be wise. Do not call. Was it not because an angel spoke to Mary that she got into trouble? A virgin is minding her business, kept herself, kept herself from every man, was minding her business. Suddenly, angel, angels begin to hover around her vicinity and demons are also watching because they know angels don't roam around for nothing. What is happening around Mary's house? An angel suddenly appears and says, Woman, you are highly favored. Now, everything that happened to Mary, God calls it favor. Go and read your Bible and tell me if you like that kind of favor. We must learn to interpret the writings on the wall. From the day the angel said you are highly favored, she was in trouble. Suddenly, a woman who claims she's a virgin, you are seeing her stomach protruding. Imagine the Sanhedrin council, the parents say, look, just talk to us. We are still here. No matter what it is, we have. And what happened? Which rabbi? Joseph said, no way. I'm not. I mean, I mean, you know me. I've, I've labored here. I'm a carpenter. I mean, I'm a carpenter. I've been a diligent person. 
how do you explain yourself in the presence of such obvious evidence sometimes evidences are not the end of it there is more that you see you are standing with a protruded stomach and all the women are saying shame on you at least my own i'm bad everybody knows i'm bad you who claims you are good look at this and yet god mandates that you keep quiet ah. joseph looked at her and said what have you done okay i respect you and i'm a noble man i will divorce you quietly i will meet your father and say give me back my dowry i will quietly go the angel said no do you know what it means to come and meet people and say, I interacted with an angel and he said a ghost from heaven. Is, is this honor in Africa? You are already in trouble and you gather elders and there. Instead of you to humble yourself and seek help, you are now bringing such a stupid explanation. A ghost, an angel appeared to me. And the elders will say, I told you, you are you people have irresponsible children. Now I'm 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 being graphic so that you will really know what Mary went through. It's easy to think oh she was just favored. That pain and that embarrassment in heaven's interpretation is called favor. That God can tell you you are highly favored, and that means there is no more job. And you go to God and say, Lord, what is this? And he says, favor. Because it is in your frustration, you will come to church and sit close to your destiny helper. Usually, if you had your salary, you will not worship when they say worship. But now, there was no song, yet you knelt down. That's how serious your commitment was in church that day. Joseph looks at a wine presser I'm rounding up and a baker and he's able to show them compassion even in the prison and now he says please when you go to the king help me tell him I am innocent I don't have access to the king but I'm a sincere person then the wine presser goes to the king and enjoys his time and for two years leaves Joseph there and then one day ah when it is time for God to shake himself and wake up. The thing about that, that story is that he woke up. Read your Bible. He said, let God arise. There are times that God is not only there. He wants to arise. That means he's not only ready to reveal his presence. He's ready to reveal his might, his power, and his voice. For someone, you have entered that season. Oh, You have entered that season where God is about to make a statement. Let me tell you this. When God speaks, every other voice is too late. He speaks in majesty. Who is like him? Lion and the lamb. Seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. And every ocean rolls. To the Lord of Lords. When God was ready to lift Joseph, he did it in a way. We're about to pray. I truly sense that this message is prophetic and is for someone in this place. Suddenly a king goes to sleep. Since no man could advocate for you, there is an advocate with the father, Jesus himself. There are times that your background does not have men who can speak for you you trusted people who failed you you said please talk to the ceo i am qualified when they got there they used your leverage to rise and forgot about you was it not mordecai that saved the king he saved the king and yet he was not rewarded when god was ready to arise that night ahasuerus could not sleep notice that breakthrough has to do with waking up everybody who was responsible for bringing breakthrough had to wake up god withdrew sleep including jesus now jesus wakes up and says what is the problem and they said master carest thou not that we perish king ahasuerus could not sleep and he said bring me the chronicles they opened there were many people who did good things but he said what has been done to this man i believe that in this 2021 the book of remembrance 
is about to be opened for someone. I'm speaking to you prophetically by the spirit of grace. You helped somebody establish his business. You helped someone rise. You gave an advice. You prayed with a family. You were praying and you were fasting with them. It looks like God has forgotten you. Lord, I am part of the growth and the lifting of so many people. And yet the Bible says, withhold not good from him that it is due. When it is within your power. And it looks like I've been forgotten. But I speak to you, there is a God who can arise. And the book of remembrance was opened. And that night, Pharaoh went to bed. And suddenly Pharaoh had a dream. And when Pharaoh woke up, God himself shut the heavens. The wise men, the astrologers, the necromancers, they tried to conjure spirits, but the Almighty was already awake. Can I tell you this? When God wants to announce you, he will shut every other door that can compete with you and put you in the presence of your destiny helpers. I know how this God lives. We are going to pray. And I want someone who knows this song to be ready to sing for me. There is nothing you cannot do. That Yoruba song. You are mighty. Nathaniel Bassi's song. Because this is what is going to happen to someone in this place. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You are in a season where God is helping you understand the storms in your life. They call you a black sheep. The Bible says there is this treasure that is in earthen vessels. Lord, I've been in Lagos for 10 years. All I have done is to serve you. All I have done is to be faithful. I have refused corruption, but it looks like there is no reward. Will my life be a negative testimony? I speak to you, the Almighty is about to rise. In this 2021, find strength. Find strength, David's Christian Center. Find strength, the keeper of Israel. He does not sleep, he does not slumber. Sing it for me, please, while we pray. a very prophetic atmosphere please give me volume once upon a time in my life please look at me I remember many many years ago I was invited for a meeting no man knew Joshua Selman then I remember praying to fast I fasted for three days preparing for that meeting when I was about to go for that meeting it was raining and the people i knew the people were hungry to receive it was a small gathering they didn't have any money to give me they didn't have any honor no protocol no nothing and i said lord i love you more than this i got up i prayed and that was how i carried my bible in that rain i was walking and trekking to that meeting tears were coming out of my eyes and I was saying Lord I do this because I love you I'm not looking for fame I'm not looking for nothing I just want Jesus to be glorified when you pass through storms it gives you compassion 
hear what I'm telling you. This is, some of you is after five years, you will look for this teaching. And with tears in your eyes, you will listen to it again. This is how the great are made in this kingdom. The way to the throne is the cross. Let me wrap up We're praying. All of a sudden, the king wakes up from his sleep. He gathers the wise men and they cannot give him an answer. And while that is happening, at the other side is a young man saying, Lord, this is the day that the Lord has made. You have told me to rejoice, but there is nothing to rejoice in. Ah! When the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always, sometimes you do not know that you have five minutes left to come out of the storm. Five minutes left. Can I tell you this? Sincerely, I can tell you, five minutes to your breakthrough it will still not look like it if joseph knew that he was just a day left as a prisoner suddenly the man says i remember my wrong this day there was a young man i met in prison why he got there i do not know but this man interpreted my dream and the bible says the king sent for joseph and they brought him out of his dungeon king Ahasuerus said who is in the chamber there and mordecai came and said i'm the one he said what should be done to a man who has done this mordecai thought he was the one so in his wicked heart he gave the best option he said quickly go and do that for mordecai i prophesy to someone in the name of jesus may my god prepare a table for you in this season in the presence of your enemies i stand by the anointing of the spirit i decree and declare that in this season god who is the lifter of men may he lift you in the name of jesus he said i will lift up my eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help i don't know where you get yours but my help comes from the lord the maker it is not only heaven and earth he makes he can make men he can make businessmen he can make women of power lift your voice and pray one minute lord lift me this is the season of my lifting of laughter i've gone through storms you may be crying but pray you may be crying but pray five minutes and we're done listen to me you are going to ask god for grace there are times god will not take the storm away isaiah 43 please give it to us we're praying my spirit is fired up in this place isaiah 43 from verse 1 and 2 but now say yet the lord that created thee o jacob he that formed thee o israel fear not for i have redeemed you i have called thee by name he says you are mine verse 2 when you pass through waters not if when i will be with you not i will take the water away from you the most important thing is my presence there and through the rivers they shall not overflow you and when you walk through fire it shall not burn you neither shall the flames kindle upon you father grace to pass through lift your voice and pray there are families that are praying right now there are businesses that are praying right now i assure you that challenge will not see the end of you Jesus and Christ of the living
look up. The next prayer point. Because for some of you that season has ended. But the dynamics of your announcing is that God will have to create a scenario where he will introduce you in the presence of your helpers. Let me tell you this. When God wants to bless you, he will shut any other door that is an alternative to you and bring you before the great. It's true. This is how God lived. Suddenly, whoever would have been a worthy replacement for that period, God shuts that door and puts you in a position where only your gift can be seen and can be recognized. Are you ready to pray? Father, announce me in this season. It's not a carnal prayer. Announce me in the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your voice and pray. Announce my business. Announce my family. Let it be noised abroad what God is doing in this assembly, in your life. Don't be tired of prayer. You came tonight for an encounter. Hallelujah. Now please look up. My God. Some of you are really crying in this place. Don't be ashamed of your tears. Psalm 126. Psalm 126. When the Lord turned again. The captivity. Of Joshua Selman. He said he did it in a way and a manner that we were like them that dream. Verse 2. Then was our mouth filled with laughter. And our tongue with singing. Then they said among the hidden. The Lord had done great things for them. Verse 3. He says the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. 4 says turn again our captivity. Like the streams of the south. Verse 5. They that sow, keep that scripture there. So while you are crying, you are sowing. You are sowing service. You are sowing honor. You are reading with the candle in the night and nobody knows you. No job and no nothing. You are writing the ideas. When God says go on a seven day dry fast, no one knows you. No one is placing a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When God is saying you will dress kings, you will be a fashion designer for kings. At that you don't, you always don't look like it until his grace exempts you. Sowing in tears. For someone, this is a prophetic word for you. Don't stop. In that one small room, keep sowing. You may cry, but keep sowing. Buy all the notebooks. Get pastor's tapes. Get pastor's books. Pray in tongues. While others are praying, keep crying, but pray. You may not have the money for all the meals you want, but pray. You may not have the options now, but pray. God told you that you will have a business that is global. Keep praying and preparing. As you spend money building your capacity, you may cry, but pray. The Bible says, Day that sow in tears they shall reap in joy verse 6 the last verse he that goeth forth stop this verse is for those moving forward this verse is for those who intend to move forward it says he that goeth forth and in the process he weeps because the seeds that he is carrying is precious there is an assurance for you that you will return to the same place you cried understand what God is saying that a day will come you who has been called a rejected stone you will return back to that same house that same neighborhood this time around Moses does not return as a fearful person he returns as one who has met Elohim and he says Pharaoh this is not the same Moses who left when Moses, when Mary gave back to Jesus and the angels came, the Magi came, you can imagine the joy had been vindicated. Finally, when Jesus grew and they began to see the exploits, I could imagine the joy on Mary's face. I could imagine those who laughed at Mary, saying, Mary, we are sorry. We were foolish and ignorant people. I assure you in your lifetime, 
for some of you the sun the moon and the 11 stars that laughed at you they will return back and bow to you and say when you were making that decision we did not discern let me pray for you father I'm standing here at David's Christian Center a house you have so lifted a house you have so honored I have brought your word to your people father scattered across this auditorium are people crying people who have gone through and are going through storms on account of their desire to advance there are people right now who may not even be able to understand what is happening in their lives but lord we just sang that there is nothing you cannot do i stretch my hands over your people oh god of heaven and i pray that for everyone who has endured and continued i stand by the god of heaven and i announce to you that in this season go forward in this season go forward according to exodus chapter 14 from verse 13 to 15 i stand by the god of heaven and i declare to you that it is time for you to go forward in your career go forward in the name of jesus christ i decree and declare by the spirit that every tongue that rises up against you in this season let it be judged for your sake I prophesy Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21 over your life and I will give David's Christian center favor in the sight of the Egyptians and it shall come to pass in this 2021 that as ye go provided you will go if you will not go there is no favor but if you will go I assure you you will not go empty this scripture is for those who have the courage to go for as long as you have the courage to advance to take that risk in righteousness I declare you will not go empty in the name of Jesus Christ and every voice that has lied to you that it will be as before master we have tried all night we tried it in 2019 we tried it in 2020 I bring you a prophetic word go back again this time around with an anointing this time around with an unction go back again this time around with favor this time around with faith go back again in the name of Jesus Christ can I pray for your loved ones in Africa you are not free if you are the only one who is blessed you have to pray that everybody around you is also blessed it is always as for me and my house i declare for your loved ones who are not here but because you are standing here at greatest christian center i join my faith with that of pastor kingsley and his wife and in the name of jesus as a threefold cord we speak to you and to the families represented in this ministry and the families of those following online or whatever platform in the name of jesus be blessed be blessed go forward advance gain strength achieve much in the spirit in the name of jesus i pray finally for your prayer life you see no matter what else you gain if your spiritual life is down you are really down let me pray for your prayer life and your word study life for some of you last year you had no time for god you were busy here and there but i declare in the name of jesus fresh fire upon your prayer altar fresh fire upon your prayer altar passion for the word i release upon you passion for fellowship fellowship with the brethren in the name of jesus christ can i tell you this we continue to respect the government and the authorities around us but as much as god grants room and opportunity for the gathering of the saints and it does not violate any government policy sustain the courage to be in the gathering of believers the church 
is a strategy. The only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to ward off darkness on earth. The church is beyond the gathering of people. It's a, it's a platform and a strategy that was built with God's own intelligence. I will build my church. I decree and declare that no one in this church will be a victim of coronavirus. And if there are any of your family members who are currently suffering it now, we declare the life and power of Jesus over their bodies now. This church remains blessed. This church remains lifted in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much, Ma. The Lord honor you. The Lord increase you in Jesus' name. to be here tonight um, praise the Lord while standing I just allow me to say a word or two and then we we'll sit your pastor pastor Kingsley is not just a man of God he truly is a good man saying this because I love Jesus I love him I honor him profoundly and what he's doing the, the little time that we had over the office I, I just I just I could discern the love the sincerity for God and for you thank you sir truly honor you hallelujah praise the Lord may the Lord bless you may the Lord honor you such an honor to be here hallelujah and then Pastor Gideon, thank you. I honor you and I love you so much, sir. Hallelujah. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace, your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace, your life is changed. You will never be the same. You've touched His grace. Father, we declare tonight in the name of Jesus that this will be our testimony in this conference. Inside, outside, following online, our hearts are open to receive. And we pray and we cry unto you, speak to our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The Lord put something, we'll be seated shortly, but the Lord put a message in my heart that I believe it is not only for this church and this conference. I think it's a, it's a very powerful teaching for the body of Christ. And so I'd like you to listen with your heart opened. And I pray that the truth here will set us on fire like the foxes of Samson. In the name of Jesus. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. We're going to start tonight's teaching with two prayer requests. This is one. Deuteronomy chapter 2 and verse 3. Someone prophesy. It says, You have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. Turn it into a prayer in one minute. Lord, I declare that this level, this level, this level, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm tired of this spiritual level, this financial level. Someone is praying. Ye have compassed this mountain long enough. Turn ye not words. Shalapakoto 
Randagato. Spiritually, financially, maritally, career wise, in business. Take me to a higher dimension in the name of Jesus. point number two and then we'll sit. The Bible says when the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion. It says we were like them that dream and our mouths were filled with laughter and they said among the hidden that the Lord had done great things for them. He said the Lord had done great things for us whereof we are glad. The request is turn again our captivity like the streams of the Negev. Please lift your voice in one minute and ask the Lord to give you a visitation. Turn my life around in the name of Jesus Christ. Please pray. of Jesus Christ. Please be seated. God bless you. The laws of advancement. The laws of advancement. Exodus chapter 14 and verse 15. I'm teaching on the laws of advancement. These are irrefutable spiritual principles that are responsible for the advancement of men and women in this kingdom. The Bible says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak to the children of Israel that they go forward. God is a God that desires that we move forward, that we make progress, that we have notable results in our lives. John 15 and verse 8, he said, Herein is my Father glorified, that ye bear much fruit. So shall you be my disciples. God desires that we make progress. In fact, everything that is alive grows. Everything that is alive increases. Are we together? Luke chapter 2 and verse 52, the Bible says, And Jesus increased or grew in wisdom, in stature, in favor with God and with men. Proverbs chapter 4 and verse 18, the Bible says, The path of the just is as a shining light. It says it shines more and more unto the perfect day. So God is a God of advancement. Please understand this. It is his will that we make progress spiritually, financially, maritally, career-wise, all of the dimensions of your life that we make progress. Let me share with you a scripture that has blessed my life. First Samuel chapter 12, please, and verse 6. Never forget this scripture for the rest of your life. Please read it. Ready? It's projected. One to read. And Samuel said unto the people, It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. Stop. Stop. That means in this kingdom, men do not just move. When you see people move from one dimension of victory and exploits to another, the Bible says behind the scene, it is the Lord that advances men. So when you see your pastor moving from one level to the other, triumphing, that it is the Lord that advances men. No man sustains the ability in himself to make progress. You can be well intentioned, but in this kingdom, it is the Lord that advances men. So behind every strange result that you see, behind the mysterious exploits and the rising of men in this kingdom that dumbfounds the wisdom of men, it is the Lord that advances people. The 
Lord is going to advance someone in this place. It is the Lord that advanced Moses and Aaron. You just saw Moses moving forward. You just saw Aaron moving forward. But the Bible is saying it was the Lord. That means when we see you moving forward, that by April, you turn back and it looks like 10 years was put in one year. When, 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 when people ask you and say, I, 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 the last time I met you, it was not like this. Spiritually, financially, you will refer them to this scripture. That behind the exploits of the saints, it is the Lord that advances men. Hallelujah. This is very powerful. God is a God that operates by laws and systems. Please look up. The character of the kingdom is such that you will hardly find God do the same thing twice in scripture. The first thing God does or introduces to men is the model of what he wants to do. In everything he does the first time is a seed and a pattern for the continuity of that result. So when he wants to make man, he makes the first man, the first woman and never has to make man and woman again. He created a pattern. Are we together now? So that every time you want more men, you subscribe to the law. Are, are we together now? God has not had any cause to create plants and animals again because he made them and weaved in them a pattern and a system. God is a God of systems. And if you do not understand his methodologies, you may never enjoy the rich benefit. Even though you are a partaker of that life, you may be alienated from the life of God. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 18, he says, having their understanding dark being alienated from the life of God through the ignorance that is in them. Ephesians 4 and verse 18. Are we together? Yes. So we need to understand the systems of God and he operates by laws, spiritual laws. Advancement in the kingdom has laws. There are spiritual principles that when we walk in keeping with those principles, inevitably, let me say this before I begin to just share. There are three levels of experiencing the power of God or the power of God is vested upon men in three levels. Number one, there is the dimension of the power of God that comes through encounters. When you encounter God, there is a dimension of his power that is invested in encounters. If it is the God of the Bible you meet, you will never be the same after you meet him. There is a dimension of his power that comes upon you. Number two, there is a dimension of the power of God that is invested in laws and principles. Please understand this. The power that makes laws and principles work is still the power of God. So there is a dimension of the power of God that is invested in laws and principles. You do not have to acknowledge God to access that power. You just have to understand the laws. Are we together now? So you can deny God. You can reject God. And yet, because you understand the principles, the power was designed to be released at the instance of understanding. The moment you understand the principle that governs that spiritual process, the power of God is released. It is at this level that principalities and powers and all kinds of um, sects, religious sects, seem to be able to tap into spiritual power. It's at that frequency that there is a dimension of God's power that was invested in laws and knowing him was not a condition to release that power. Understanding his principles is what releases the power. Number three, there is a dimension of God's power that is invested through covenant with men. This is not for everyone. You partake of that dimension of power to the degree to which you align with who and what God is doing part time.
So if there is something prophetic God is doing with your pastor, listen to me. There are certain covenants that he can have with God that makes for certain possibilities in this assembly. You will be surprised that even before you understand the principle responsible for that result, you will already be enjoying it because you are under, you are enjoying the dimension of power that comes through God's vow and God's covenant with a man. There are people before you started tithing, God started prospering you. Even before you understood what you were doing, before you started giving, before you started committing yourself, it was because God had a covenant with a man that anyone who comes under your spiritual influence will benefit from that which you have with God. I said all that so that you will understand that the principles of the kingdom, spiritual laws are powerful. They are irrefutable. When you read Genesis 11, the Bible talks about Nimrod, the son of Cush, his desire to build a city whose tower and the top will reach the heavens. In that, in that story, Satan was not mentioned. In that story, the Holy Spirit was not mentioned. Yet, God testified that he was the only one who could stop what they were doing. Laws are powerful. You will tame life when you understand spiritual laws. Hallelujah. The laws of advancement. Write this down. Growth and advancement in this kingdom must be intentional. There's no assumption as far as growth and advancement is concerned. It must be intentional that I desire to leave this level spiritually. I desire to leave this level financially. You will be amazed at how many people who hope to move forward. They wish to move forward. They believe that just because they are in Christ, one day automatically they will move forward. The only dimension of growth that looks automatic is your biological growth. Every other kind of growth must be initiated intentionally. Hallelujah. It's very, very important. And because you see, the principle of fulfillment is such that it is in your growth and progress that you find fulfillment. When you find fulfillment, you find fulfillment as you move, as you make progress. You will celebrate having a beautiful house now and having the money to pay for that rent. But after a few years, you will start getting angry that you are a tenant. You see that now? Something you once celebrated will no longer bless you again because there is an instinct for advancement. As a man of God, you will operate at a frequency in ministry and you'll be happy for a while and then later a dissatisfaction is in your spirit. God is a God of advancement. I want to share with you a few principles. I've had the privilege to glean from the wisdom of the word and the wisdom of uncommon mentors. What you are learning, I submit to you, are not the opinions of men. It is dangerous and even destructive to teach you opinions. The truths that I share with you are irrefutable principles guarded by God's own jealousy. From whatever point you are, if you walk in keeping with these truths, I give you a guarantee as touching the name of the Lord. You will never remain where you are. And believe me, I say it with all humility. I know what I'm saying. I'm not teaching you nonsense. He said the things we have heard, the things we have seen, the things that our hands have handled, even of the word of life, that is what we communicate unto you. So can you pray one more time? Open my eyes, oh God. Let me see. Open my eyes. In the name of Jesus. The laws of advancement. Hallelujah. When I found out the systemic character of God, it changed my life. Because my spiritual background was such that I came from an evangelical background. And then when I began to have encounters with God, I was amazed that I was knowing him, getting deeper in the things of God. But in a shocking way, the quality of my life did not change. Regardless my encounters. 
the only benefit I was receiving was spiritual benefit in terms of my knowledge of God but the quality of my life my influence and I said something this something is wrong how could I be having such profound encounters with the God of the Bible and yet my life would not change until I was introduced to the systemic character of God that there is Jesus the way everybody say it Jesus said I am the way I am the truth I am the life if you know the truth wonderful if you know the life wonderful but I introduce to you in this conference Jesus the way the methodology of the kingdom it is still Jesus many people do not know Jesus the way and if you do not know the way then you don't know how results are obtained in this kingdom the dimension of Jesus that reveals how results are obtained is called Jesus the way the way to growth the way to increase are we together very quickly let's conserve time the first law of advancement that I want to share tonight is called the law of vision the law of vision please pay attention the law of vision Jeremiah chapter 1 please from verse 11 and 12 the law of vision moreover the word of the Lord came unto me saying Jeremiah what seest thou and I said I see but this is what I see the rod of an almond tree verse 12 then saith the Lord unto me thou hast seen well for I will hasten my God so there is a relationship between speed and vision the moment you see well you compel speed in your life because you have seen correctly I will hasten I was going to perform it anyway but on the strength of the clarity of your vision I will hasten my word to perform it Genesis chapter 13 verse 14 and 15 Genesis chapter 13 were discussing vision the Lord said unto Abraham after that Lot was separated from him lift up now thy eyes and look from the place where thou art northwards and southwards and eastwards and westwards 15 it says for all the land which thou seest to thee I will give unto thy seed forever not the land that is available the one you see is the one that is given to you there's vast land available but as far as your vision can capture that is what will be delivered unto you what is vision a clear picture of the next level of your life a clear picture of your destiny this is very powerful there are many well-meaning believers born again filled with the Holy Spirit and they have ignored the power of vision to the detriment of their progress vision is powerful a clear picture of the next level of your life it is in this area that both science and religion agree that without vision there is no movement motion is a function of vision there is no car that does does not have a provision to look at there is no plane no matter how how managed they must give space because sight is what controls movement the pilot must see the driver must see the captain must see I don't know any creature that has his eyes backward every creature I know has the eyes forward because you only move in the direction of your eyes vision is powerful please listen carefully the vision for my life this ministry continues to make giant strides in the spirit because your pastor has a vision very clear vision are we together now now as powerful as vision is it does not profit you just remaining as vision you must break your vision into goals and break your vision into daily tasks 
until your vision becomes daily tasks it will only remain a dream in the realm of the spirit there are people who have done well in terms of writing a theme that seems to coordinate their lives but were unable to break the visions into goals what is a goal a desired end an expected end a subset of that vision and you break it into tasks there is an energy there is a power that vision gives when you break your vision into tasks it gives you focus vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things there are many things you will not be able to have the courage to say no to until you have vision vision gives you the legitimate ground to say no to many things if you are not a man of vision, you are not a woman of vision, you will not have the courage to say no to so many things. And there are many things, 24 hours was given to you with respect to your vision. So time will never be enough to mix your vision alongside many distractions. You will have to cut away so many things to give you the time and to give you focus. Can I tell you this? The unit of destiny is time. Whatever you give your time to, you are giving part of your life to. And you must be sure that every minute and every second you commit to anything is worth that while. Everybody say vision. Show me a man who has nothing working in his life but vision. I show you a man who is already walking his way to a dimension of kingdom influence, dimension of grace that no principality and power can stop. Vision is powerful. I do not know any leader who is not visionary. Even the devil is visionary. He has been clear about his assignment. Even Jesus testified about the dexterity of Satan's assignment that anytime you see him he is there to steal to kill to destroy there's no record of him coming to advise there's no record of him coming anytime the thief cometh not that means he has no business coming except this singular vision no wonder he seems to be succeeding the law is so powerful we are hoping God will find a way of just lifting us. Very, very spiritual but very wrong. Some of those superstitious thinkings in the name of Jesus, the son of the living God, be delivered from it now. We have many sociological wise sayings. They look spiritual because they've been handed down by well-intentioned people. But these things are, they give access to the devil to blind our minds and our progress. One day you go better. You've heard that kind of saying. I know my God is too faithful to just leave me like that. You are right. But with respect to this truth, you are wrong. I introduce to you the God of systems. Hoping that your life will change just because he's alive. Let me tell you this. There are many children, there are many people who are dying. If God were to act, he would attend to them first before he comes to you. Even at the, at the detriment of your eternal salvation, he did not interrupt your choice. There are people today who woke up this morning, but as we speak, they are in hell now. And yet God is still seated on his throne. So hoping that one day something will just happen is a joke. You have to prophesy to yourself, myself, wake up. One day I will have a global ministry. One day in the name of Jesus I will bless me. Wonderful. Congratulations. Except for the fact that it will only remain a wish in the realm of the spirit. Let me tell you the difference between a wish and a goal. A wish is a desire with no responsibility commitment to it. When you set a goal, it is a strong desire that is backed up with the willingness to commit 
whatever it takes under God to actualize that goal responsibility is the key word if all you have is just a desire it will never come to pass your desire must be able to sponsor the willingness to pay whatever price under God to see that it comes to pass are we together you call it gaining momentum so where the, the plane is only warming up vision I am amazed pastor at how many Christians respectfully speaking live absolutely visionless lives people just move up and down and blame God for everything when they can't see God they blame pastors who they can see for everything and then blame parents blame every now I, I understand that sometimes these things can be emotionally overwhelming but the day you start moving forward is the day you take responsibility over your destiny and say in the name of Jesus I'm tired of giving excuses in the name of Jesus I'm tired of of legitimizing the continuity of mediocrity and weakness in my life I respect and I sympathize with your background I, I sympathize with the fact that you came from a family that was not very responsible I, I'm, I'm not I'm not I sympathize with you but wake up from where thou art lift up your eyes for as long as you keep looking down you will soon find your children looking with you you will soon find your grandchildren joining them to look with you many of our parents respectfully speaking kept complaining until we now join them in that complaint you make up your mind in this conference that my children will not find me there in the name of jesus christ are few people historically speaking who had the leverage to be able to rise to positions of influence and notoriety most people had to speak to themselves right from where they were you ask your pastor he will tell you that there were times he had to just shut away and say look it's time for us to move forward I remember talking with a man very great and influential man and this man told me apostle would you believe that as at the time I married my wife I had to give her one of my big sheds when she was pregnant that means you remove your shirt and say wife there's no buying uh, you know those those gowns said i don't have the money for that don't expect anything there but uh, thank god i'm bigger than you we can make do with this the lord will prosper us in the future now that man would have given a careless excuse and now mentored the child and say young man let me tell you how you arrived let me tell you the story and the child in anger and pain will remain there become a teenager become an adult marry his own wife and say don't 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 blame me for being irresponsible i'm continuing something there is a there is a history to this there has to be someone who will break that cycle and it's, it comes with the power of vision what seest thou as for me i see a life of glory in the name of jesus i see an opportunity to wake up every morning transforming a generation blessing a people for someone you are seeing a company that god has been speaking to you you have refused to write it you have refused to take it serious the holy ghost works like a woman if he tries to give you his attention and you ignore it he will step back until he discerns seriousness from you again many of you the reason why god stops showing you certain things is because he trains that you don't take his speaking serious Abraham come out of your father's house the first assignment is come out come out of your father's house he came from a land of wizardry and witchcraft or of the Chaldeans and he called that traditionally he said come out of your father's house from your kindred from everything to a land that I will show you the transformation started when he changed what he was seeing May grace to be visionary rest upon your life. Hear me. You may be in that one room now. There's no point faking what can be real. Just be patient with your destiny. You see, the powerful thing about vision is that it has the power of omnipresence. You can be in a room and your vision can be where you will be tomorrow. The, the imagination is powerful. It can go. You can't. Listen. Listen. Your vision works with your imagination and it can it can go to your future. Make 
make sure it supervises that that future is real, it will come back and take your body there. Are we together? Vision. Let's hurry up. Number two. The second spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is the law of light. The power of spiritual illumination and insight. Please pay attention. In this kingdom we rise by the light that we possess. The law of light. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Paul was mentoring the church in Colossae. And he was praying for them. And he desired that they might be filled with three dimensions of light. Number one, the knowledge of God's will. Number two, all wisdom. Number three, spiritual understanding. It takes light to rise in this kingdom. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 2. Paul said, I went up by revelation. Galatians 2, 2. I went up. It took more than desire. From where I was, I went up and it was revelation that took me up. I went up by revelation. Light is powerful in this kingdom. Psalms 45 and verse 4. And in your majesty, he says, rise, rise prosperously because of truth. And in your majesty, ride prosperously. Triumph. Move forward because of the truth that you know. Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. Very, very humbling scripture. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 10 and verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them. There's no exception to it. The labor of the foolish wearied every one of them because he knoweth not how to go to the city. Not because there is no city. The city is there, but the method to get there. Have you climbed a bike with someone who looked so confident? And he said, take me somewhere. And the guy was speeding as if he was going to kill you. And then he said, where did you say you are going again? I, I know it's where. And he said, I thought you said you know the place. He said, well, um, mention the name again. I think I'm... I'm and he said, so wh where were you going with this kind of speed? Lights. Listen. Every dimension of result in the kingdom has a light and illumination component that connects to it. If it's finances, there is a dimension of spiritual truth that connects to it. If it is speed, if it is restoration, if it is influence, all of these facets of results have a, a, an exact body of spiritual knowledge allocated to them. Are we together now? Can I tell you this? Our knowledge of God is, our pursuit and the knowledge of God is infinite. Even in heaven, we'll continue to be learning God. But the keys that make for a successful life are finite. You can hold them. They are not infinite. You can actually hold the keys that make for a successful life. They are many, but they are finite. Are we together? Like a student, learning never stops. But when you went to school, there was an exact curriculum allocated for the degree you went to get, isn't it? When you exhausted it, they gave it to you. So you can beat your chest and say, I am a doctor or I am a this and that. It doesn't mean your learning has stopped, but you have exhausted that curriculum. There is an exact body of knowledge that is responsible for specific spiritual outcomes. You want to rise financially, there is an exact body of knowledge allocated. You want favor upon your life, there is an exact body of knowledge. Isn't it amazing that many times we desire outcomes without the knowledge that connects us to them? For instance, if it is favor you want to see in your life, why am I not seeing favor? I know the Bible says I should be favored, but why is it not working? Because you do not understand the dynamics that make for favor. Light. So 
apostle, what are the laws that govern favor, for instance? Just as if I desire favor, just wishing and hoping that favor will come, I, I would frustrate myself. I have to learn the principles that control favor in this kingdom. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 21. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. Are you seeing now? Favor is a product of light. Favor works with sight. I will give these people favor in the sight of the Egyptians. And it shall come to pass that as ye go, ye shall not go empty. So emptiness has an explanation. When your hand is empty, it's not, it's, it's not a, 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 a happenstance. There is an exact spiritual law you are violating that leads to emptiness. Are we together? Apostle, why am I not favored? Because for many of us, you think, oh, if God just wants to favor me, he will favor me. And I've respectfully observed in the body of Christ that the definition of favor, you know, many times we say favor is unmerited. I understand what you are trying to say. But the truth is that it is the dimension of favor that works as unmerited access with respect to salvation that is unmerited. Favor is very merited. I'm just using favor as a case study to explain light. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. This is the law that controls favor. Proverbs 13 and verse 15. Read with me please. One to read. <laughs> So the Bible gives us the similitude of two pregnant women, two pregnant women. The first woman is called good understanding and that she has a child in her womb. When she gives birth, the name of that child is favor. There is also another woman called transgression. She gives birth, the name of her child is hardship. So when you see the child, no child falls from the sky. There is a mother that gives birth to that child. Theoretically speaking, the womb of a woman should be able to give birth indefinitely, isn't it? That means you can program favor again and again. I've told you if it happens only once, it's breakthrough, not favor. The proof that it is favor is consistency regardless the circumstances. So many people have not really experienced favor. So hoping that it will happen, you will just testify once in four years, once in five years. What happened to you is not favor. What happens to you is the law of time and chance because it happens to everybody. You can choose and program favor over your life and it happens every time. You will get to a point where if in a day you are not favored, you will go on a retreat because you know something is wrong. Are you blessed? Good understanding is what gives favor. But the way of the transgressor is hard. Favor works with the power of sight. Let me tell you this. If the grace for favor is really on you, believe me when I say this, the only person who cannot bless you is a blind person. Favor works with sight. That's how it works. Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. Let's hurry up. Is God helping us? Esther chapter 2 and verse 15. The B part, please. And Esther obtained favor where? In the sight of how many? All them that looked upon her. So if the favor of God is on you, if I can look at you, that grace will compel me to attend to you. It's true. It's true. This is scripture. Not even the king could withstand it. Verse 17. Give us the same scripture. Esther 2 and verse 17. And the king loved Esther above all the women. And she obtained grace and favor where? In his sight. I've told you favor works with sight. When favor is on you. Is, is, is a charm like compelling force that people just look at you and they are compelled to want to bless you. Can I tell you the truth? Everybody is a giver. It's just that what is on you is not sufficient to compel the resources. Because an uncle who will vow that he will never help you will carry the same seed and kneel down before a man of God and say, give me an honor of taking this. Whereas it was one-fifth what he's giving that you were asking for. Everybody is a giver. It's just that you program your possibilities by yourself. 
power of light. Go and get pastor's tapes. Get the CDs. Don't say I was there when they preached it. It's this kind of carelessness that makes us to be around miracles and never experience it. I listened to my own teachings as if I did. I was not the one who preached it. I don't listen to it with the arrogance of, oh, I know this. No. When Joshua Selman is blessing, I go down on my knees and I receive it too. Believe what I'm saying. This is why most people who are members in a church, usually they are the ones who don't receive. So people just come because the people come with hunger and passion. They buy all the tapes. They say it's an honor. You mean I'm meeting Pastor Kingsley? Please, I have discerned that there is a grace for favor. Let it come upon my life. Yet you are the one holding the water like the wine presser, the bottler, and yet it never blesses you. Are we together? Discernment. Make up your mind that you will be a student of knowledge. Knowledge first before clothes. Knowledge first before luxury. Invest in knowledge. What you have, you have. The law of light. Let's hurry up number three. Wherever we stop, we'll just pray for tonight. The third spiritual law that governs advancement in this kingdom is called the law of transformation. Hmm. The power of a transformed mind. You want to make progress. You want to move forward. You have to sustain a superior belief system that is higher and greater than the context of culture, the context of your background. This is where many well-meaning believers, we refuse to transit mentally. We, we, we are loyal to belief systems that are destructive, satanic. Do you know your mindset is the gateway that both the Holy Spirit and demons flow through to access your life? Are we together? Transformation is very, very powerful. Very, very, very powerful. There are many believers who have refused to be transformed. And because of their refusal for transformation, they find out that they are unable to walk in the fullness of that which God desires. Proverbs chapter 23 and verse 7, please. Proverbs 23 and verse 7. For as he thinketh in his heart, look up please, so is he, not so he will be. You are already it. Your thought life, your mindset, your perspectives. Write this down please. Let's talk a bit about mindsets. If this is where I stop tonight, it is too important to be brushed. Write this down. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. A mindset is a sustained thinking pattern. It is a viewpoint. It is a perspective. Your mindset talks about your ideologies, your value systems, your thinking pattern. Let me define what a stronghold is. A stronghold is a mindset that has been fortified by the presence of demon spirits so that the victim is kept perpetually in that line of thought. It is that spiritual condition that makes the word of God of none effect. That means what the devil does when he wants to destroy you is to bring informations that are based on lies, informations that are not consistent with the character of God. They may be sociologically right. They may be thoughts that you are familiar with. When he finds out that those thoughts are crystallized in your mind, demon spirits come to build a wall around that mindset to ensure that there is no other way you think because your thinking is what keeps the door open for their operation. If you're, The Bible says, this sign shall follow them that believe. That means what follows you is a report card of what you believe. You don't drive what follows you. You change what you believe and what follows you changes too. You see that now? These signs shall follow them that believe. So what is following me 
is following me because of what I believe. Failure, retrogression. You have a relationship in two weeks. All your friends just hate you and leave you. Everybody, you've given excuses that everybody hates you. The signs are following you. You don't say, go, I don't like you. That's not how you drive them. You change their, they are coming in honor. Something in your mind is attracting them. When you become disloyal to those faulty belief systems, the signs also change. Are we together? Mindsets are formed through cultural influences. Now, there are positive aspects of culture, but there are very wrong, demonic, and destructive aspects of culture. Family backgrounds, past experiences, failures and limitations, levels of exposure, associations. All these are factors that frame our mindsets. And when God wants to do business with you in this kingdom, you will have to contend for a transformed mind. There are many people who God cannot use them today because something is wrong with their thinking. Their thinking does not give that allowance. Mindset. How does the process of transformation occur? We're praying. Number one, the first process that leads to transformation is awareness, a recognition. Even if you don't know the answer, the fact that you know you are in a situation that needs help is already the process of transformation. Transformation starts with recognition and awareness. Even if it's an awareness of your ignorance, it is a miracle in itself. A child does not know he's a child. I hope you know that. It's an adult that knows that what the child is doing is called childishness. A fool does not know he is foolish. It's only a wise person that there has to be a reference. So when God wants to show you mercy, he will find a way of contrasting your mindset with a superior belief. Now you look from that lens and see that, ah, I'm doing something wrong. Otherwise, you will flatter yourself in your mid because in your world you are still king, no matter how depraved that world is. You will know how faulty your kingdom is when another king comes. In ancient times, there were times when other kings would come, both the king and his kingdom, they sweep them. That's how mindsets are. You can live in a small world and because you are king in that small world, you can still believe that it's a kingdom worthy of living in. Until God expands your mind by showing you the possibilities that can be, then you will come back and start deconstructing those mindsets. Mindsets are powerful, very powerful. Genesis 11, let me show you something as we pray. Please give us Genesis 11, we'll read the first four verses, maybe four or five. The Bible says, and the whole earth were of one language and of one speech, verse 2. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east, they found a plain in the land of China, and they dwelt there. Verse 3, the Bible says, and they said to one another, go to, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they made bricks for stone and slime they made for mortar. Notice, notice that Nimrod was just proposing something. They had not started the building. He was doing something to their minds. Gentlemen, I'm putting you as a team who are on a project. Whether it was a spiritual building or physical, we know that creation happened. There was a building and he started by working on their minds. Verse 4. The Bible says, he said to them, let us build a city whose tower and whose top may reach the heavens. And let us make a name lest we be scattered abroad on the face of the earth. Verse 5. Now this is a very fearful scripture. Read it with me. And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Stop. That means while they were talking in the realm of the spirit, a building was rising. And God said, who is building? He didn't come. And, they had not started. But God said he came to see the building that was finished already. The moment their mind started building it in the realm of the spirit, there was a structure that was rising that called the attention of God. Everything is built twice. Anything that is not built twice cannot be truly built. You build your company twice. You build your destiny twice. 
And the first building is the authentic one. Because even if the other one is destroyed, that one will force a physical equivalence of it to come. Believe what I'm teaching you. It's true. So you can be right where you are and the Holy Spirit takes your mind to a place where the great are seated and says this is your space in destiny. While that is happening in heaven they are already seeing you move whereas you think you are in one small room. Do you know the realm of the spirit can discern progress? Please hear what I'm telling you. This is how some of us came to this thing by the grace of God. Right from where you are your body may be limited by transport fare, but your mind has an ability, your mind has omnipresence. It can enter your future and find out that that thing God said is true. It will return back. Only your mindset can hold your hand to where you need to be. I remember days when I would have the vision seeing myself around the world preaching the gospel standing and talking and ministering to kings and nobles from that background is a joke based on my background but i found out that this mind is a miracle it's a miracle that will take ages for men to know what god gave them dream with god right from that room dream with god and there is no power in existence men can bully your body not your mindset one of the most powerful spiritual laws I learned in my life. It is, the, uh, it is this law that keep, puts everybody at the same level in life. Everybody has the same opportunity. You may not believe what I'm telling you but it's true. From the lens of a transformed mind, the justice system of God ensures that if you use your mind, there is no limitation that will be sustained in your life. Go back home, write down the business idea, write down the vision for 2021, write a scripture, connect to it, and dream with the Spirit of God. Let Him show you. While that is happening, your current mindset will say you are mad. Is right, that's why you are living it. Your current mindset will say, No, no, it has. You can wave it goodbye and say, I wave this level of life goodbye. And it will wave you back forever. Hallelujah. The only limit in my life is the voice of God and process. These are the only limits I have in my life. The voice of God and process. These are the only limits. I have chosen that these are the only things that limit me in life. The voice of God and process. Do you believe what I'm sharing with you? time is up. Can you spare me five more minutes? Thank you. Please listen. I want you to pay attention. I've shared with you the law of vision. The law of light. Specific spiritual illumination. Your, your spiritual sojourn is profitless if you cannot connect the result that that light leads to. Just reading the Bible randomly in hope that you will ease the guilt of not being serious with God will not profit you. You have to look for specific light that leads to specific outcomes. Are we together? And then the power of a transformed mind. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I make up my mind to change my mind. It's a decision. How do you contend for transformation? Valuable information. You have to introduce to your mind information that are now superior in context relative to what you already have there. You cannot listen to what you've been listening to before. Before you became a Christian, before you came to this church and expect transitions to happen. You will have to sustain the discipline. That's the, the discipline of allowing the truth 
that can build your mind to be introduced. And you have to pay the price to be consistent. I dare you, go and get your pastor's tapes. Make up your mind that I must listen to two or three or four of these teachings every day. That's why I said it requires discipline. Discipline. You listen to one in the morning, you can play one while you are walking. The goal is not just awareness, the goal is transportation. You are transporting that information right to your subconscious. This is true. One more law and then we are done tonight. The law of productivity. These are the laws that govern advancement. The law of productivity. Proverbs chapter 18 please and verse 16. The law of productivity. It says the gift of a man. Proverbs 18 and verse 16. The gift of a man maketh room for him and bringeth him before great men. So your gift is like an usher. You know how you come into a place and they say, let me see your invitation. Oh, you're invited this way. It's your gift that is responsible for giving you space. To have an illusion that there is a space waiting for you is just sociological comfort. There is no space anywhere waiting for you. You create that space. Are we together? Yes. The gift of a man. The gift of a man. I was I was just celebrating and commending your pastor for the profound his profound understanding in the area of faith in the area of family life. I mean, he's uncanny his perspectives. It's true. It's true. I think you should clap. How many lives? How many destinies? How many homes? How many people? He has given answers and explanation and perspectives. The gift of a man. Nobody is going to keep clapping for you indefinitely for nothing. People love you, but they love themselves. They love their future. So to have this belief that people will indefinitely keep clapping. No. You must have something of substance that gives you space in destiny. I made up my mind as a covenant with my own life and destiny. That everywhere God has granted me a gift and an ability... I will sharpen it in a way that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Not for self-aggrandizement, but that you are, you, 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 these are principles that lift you to a position where you can represent the purposes of God. Please challenge the spirit of laziness in your life. Some of you, without developing your gift, people have started commenting on it. Imagine what happens when you develop it. I hope you still like me. Please, listen. Listen to me. Nobody goes to a mango tree without mango and just starts clapping and is happy. You look at the tree, you may stay a few minutes to get shade and move. But once it is time for mango, as it starts coming out, it starts, the, the fruit is calling you. The mango does not want followers. The mango is not looking for followers, but it is too gifted to be ignored. The mango does not go around calling for followers. It just keeps building the mango. And because hunger is something you cannot resist, you may ignore it for a while, but one day, when the sun scorches you and you stand and watch this mango, Don't call men. They only produce fruits. And men have to swallow their pride. Have you seen the skills that people employ to climb trees? All because they are looking for... I once saw a video of... Um, I think they were trying to... This this palm, palm... I think the one they climb with as though they are climbing a ladder. I said, you mean all this skill to reach that tree? Be gifted 
and watch how people will inconvenience themselves with joy to come and place a demand on the grace of God upon your life. When people give excuses of time, excuses of comfort, it's because your gift is not notable enough. I assure you, ask the herbalist. A politician, respectfully speaking, will come with his whole dignity and meet a man in a tattered room and not ask whether there is AC and not ask whether the man can speak English. The man says, turn behind and move backward. And he says, yes, sir. Because he knows that my, my political career is at the mercy of that. May you be so gifted in the name of Jesus. May your gift be so refined that it will be impossible for a generation to ignore you. Believe what I share with you. There are people in this country who cannot go out of a job for one month. Believe me. Believe me. In as much as we are saying there is no job, there are companies that if some of their people cough, they will buy a pharmacy, not a drug. Make up your mind that you will be so gifted. If it's a ministry, discern the dimensions of God's grace that he has put and work it out, place your life upon it. Apostle, God has called me to be a prophet. Like who? Everything you prophesy is wrong. The world will not place a demand on that kind of grace. Let's let in the name of honesty. Are we together? Apostle, God has called me to be a kingdom financier. Let me know what you know about finances. Can you talk to kings? You are talking to your colleagues and you are happy about it. Your colleagues are not billionaires. Thank God for them. But your goal is to be able to mentor kings. That a nation will call you to hear the counsel of God upon your life. Make up your mind that you will not be small. Go back and refine your gifts. Apostle, do you know I can cook? Can the governor eat your food? Because you see, you have to serve kings to receive the rewards of kings. Am I challenging you? Let me tell you this. There is nothing that, it, that is of value that is not in sufficient demand in this life to bless you. If you are in every industry, there are people at the top. It's those who are at the top that enjoy the blessings. Make up, shake away mediocrity. When people are clapping for you, look at those clapping for you. If they are not kings, keep moving. Mark 1 37. And when they had found him, this was the story of Jesus. Jesus had finished healing, doing several things. He ran away to go and just rest and pray, and men would not let him rest. There was such a magnetic property. Let me tell you, being gifted carries a strange, a strange magnetic property. It's amazing the level of inconvenience people will go through with joy when you are gifted. I assure you in today's world, most likely it's only your family that will love you whether you are valuable or not. God and your family members. They are enough to support you but not enough to reward you. The vast majority of your reward will be in the hands of people who are in desperate need. They need people who are gifted. I made a vow with God that you will never meet me twice to be blessed. No. Can you rise to that level of grace? Can you rise to that level of value? You are a CEO, your company. What solutions are you providing? Can I meet you once and be addicted to you? Because of the power of the value that you carry. You know, people give me all kinds of gifts. And people paint me. And sometimes when I see the photo they give, I say, you mean this is me? You didn't see it? You know, of course, I love what they did. But, ah, 
and say, oh, no, no, come on, please. Are we together? And yet there are a few that I look at and I'm like, you drew this? You say, yes, sir. What do you do? You say, once in a while, I just do it. And I'm saying, my goodness, once in a while, I would, I, I, I would pay a thousand times for this. Nigerians wake up. Believers wake up. There is something you have that the world is looking for. And can I tell you, they will not come to you while you are growing. They will come to the refined version of you. If your pastor hides today and says he's not going to preach for five months, he's going to have to beg God in that retreat and say, God, release me to bless people because they will not let him rest someone's home at least will be on fire enough for them to call him and say sir please wake up I don't care whether you are having a retreat in the name of Jesus if it takes flying you to this place oh you need to see how men react to real value your desire of decades can come to you in a moment when you make up your mind to be truly valuable these are the laws of advancement you enter your sabbath to the degree to which you are valuable you rise to a point where competition is no longer a possibility you never have planes clashing with themselves in the air there is enough space there traffic is usually down listen to me listen to me do you know that as i'm standing here right now i'm rounding up as i'm standing here right now no matter how I stretch, I can't see the island. No matter how I stretch, I can't see Abel Kuta Ogun State because I'm on the ground. But a star can be shining here and I can call someone in another state. He can still see the same star because it is high to the sky. If you become that star from where you are, you don't have to be moving. Anywhere people look at you, was it not a star that was shining? The, the same star called the Magi, right to that place where Jesus was. Spiritually, I know that some of us here are in ministry and you came to just honor Pastor and honor the conference. God is challenging us. There is a dimension of grace, spiritual illumination, value that can be brought. When you bring something, the table of greatness is still empty. But you don't sit down for nothing. You first present your gift, then you sit down. And life must vet that gift. There is a threshold level of competence and accuracy that grants you access to sit down. Make up your mind that you will take away shame and reproach from your life and your family. In the name of Jesus Christ. We have to pray. Rise up on your feet, please. For I spoke a word, you were singing over me. You have been so, so. and we're done. one prayer point and then I speak over your life and work. 
tonight. One prayer point. Lord, I make up my mind to partner with the word and the spirit for an exceptional life. It's time for me to move forward. Open your mouth and pray. Please be tired of where you are. I came to shake your current level. There is more in you. You call it gaining momentum. Someone is praying. Someone is rising from this conference in the name of Jesus, rising by the Spirit of God in ministry, in business, in career. Pray. God is doing something tonight. from moving forward. I break free right now. Lift your voice and pray. Pray seriously. Thank God for what has been done in my life so far. In ministry, in business. But I declare in the name of Jesus it's time to take a flight with destiny. Someone pray. Someone pray. Someone pray. In the name of Jesus, you are shifting to a higher level. God is planting a dissatisfaction. It's time for the globe to hear your voice. It's time for your destiny to rise. No shadow listen to me I share the burden of your pastor he's here because he loves you he's here because he desires to see you rise let me tell you this the pride of every true leader is not his personal achievements is to see that the people committed to him rise by the spirit these laws are irrefutable they are backed up by God's own jealousy some of you are crying don't be ashamed of your tears it's because his time is a season for you to rise I want to pray for you I apologize our time is gone but in this prayer I want you to believe because one of the laws that I will be sharing with you is the law of spiritual empowerment in this kingdom it is not by might in this kingdom it is not by power it takes more than intention and desire 
Hallelujah. Pastor, can I speak over your people? One of the graces that God has given me is the grace for speed. I want to pray that grace upon someone's life. Help them, please. Help them. I stretch my hands. Please help them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Upon everyone here at Davis Christian Center. I stand by the God of heaven and I stretch my hands. At the count of three. May the mantle that makes for speed. In the name of Jesus. Help them please. Please help them. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Take that grace now. Outside. Take that grace. Shabakatakatos. Speed to your destiny. Help them please. I prophesy speed to your destiny. Every delay. You are in business here. Receive speed. Help them please. Speed right now. Please bring them out if you can. Just in one minute. Bring them out if you can. Speed. Take that grace now. Whether you are an usher or not, please help them. Very quickly, let's save time. Speed. Outside, inside. I release that grace. Here at this conference, I shift you by prophecy. Step into a new dimension. A new dimension. A new dimension. I break the old. I break the old. Baba Shobakata. Ebreketeske Barotashia. For those of you who are tired, you've done your best, but it looks like there's, there's no force to move you. Right now, in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. May the anointing that moves men to next levels, may that grace come upon you now. Take that grace. 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 In the name of Jesus, take that grace for your spiritual life. Take that grace. Hallelujah. Let me speak over your finances. Listen to me. Please listen to me. There are several levels of wealth. Three of them. There is wealth that comes by providing value. And then you are rewarded in exchange. Money being one of the rewards. There is wealth that comes. You don't sell that value. Is the reward that comes when you transform lives. But there is a third level of wealth. It's called sovereign wealth. Wealth by prophecy. It says, I'm by a prophet. The Lord brought Israel out of Egypt. I want to speak over your finances. That you have the open heartedness to listen. You will marvel and wonder at what my God will do for you. I stand in the name of Jesus and I join faith with your pastor. A man that God had so helped. You, you don't have to bring them out again. That's alright. In the name of Jesus Christ over your finances I decree and declare between now and the next 90 days, like the ark of God in the house of Weber Edom, in the name of Jesus, I shift you to strange financial testimonies. Strange financial testimonies. I speak to your business. Strange financial testimonies. Your family. Every financial pressure. Those of you in debt. Those of you owing. I speak to you. Come out of it now. Hallelujah. Finally, let me pray over your prayer life and your word life. No matter what goes right in your life, if your spiritual life goes wrong, that is the, that is the control room of your destiny. An attack on your prayer life is a real attack. An attack on your word life. It says, I have prayed for you that your faith faileth not. It says, and when thou art converted, strengthen your brethren. 
every dead prayer life here that suddenly the passion to pray, the passion to wake up, the passion to fast is no longer there. Right now I speak over your prayer altar. Let it catch fire now. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. Fire from heaven. The grace to pray. The grace to pray. In the name of Jesus, this assembly is a house of prayer. I release that grace upon you. The grace to study scripture. The discipline to study scripture. In the name of Jesus. all over the world and I'm grateful for your love I'm indebted to you but it's unfortunate that there are a group of people it has gotten to my table time and again that there have been several people parading all over the internet as Joshua Selman and coming up with all kinds of charitable projects taking advantage of the love the support and the loyalty that people have for me and extracting money from people and it's it's terrible is uh, to know that people can can do this kinds of thing and i'm saying it especially to our international community there are a number of sites i don't know if the media would project them but that is not me Personally, I'm not on social media. You find any Apostle Joshua Selman or anything that looks like me or on social media, it is not me. Uh, these are scammers. They may project my message. They may do a lot of things. But anybody, let me say this. Um, you are always free to share my content. It's, it's been my joy. And, and there, are, there are several platforms on YouTube, Instagram, and all over that just, I know that there are different fan pages on, on social media that just celebrate what God is doing in man become support systems for us to take this message I love you those people you have my endorsement and my blessings but anybody please listen let this be a disclaimer anyone who would ask you to send money to give them money for any charitable project um, um, please know that you are dealing with a fraudster you can feel free to report them um, to the, the various um, uh, uh, authorities that govern the social media platforms and you can also do well to communicate our protocol department our media department our public relations department the lines will also be on the screen uh, for you to see please make sure you have these details have our protocol lines our public relations lines they they respond to everything that has to do with correspondences the media for all your media concerns um, this is so that you can have uh, the, the, the authorized channels we make ourselves as accessible as possible for everything that has to do with the ministry we have able-bodied trained people who love you passionately who will be able to communicate and for all your givings you can also contact our finance department absolutely lovely people please listen because I know that many of you um, desire to probably sow into my life sow into the ministry there are there are designated details that the finance department can give to you please anyone parading I would repeat again as Joshua Selman I do not have any charity project I'm a philanthropist you know that I give with all my heart but I do not have any orphanage hope that I uh, and then I will not I'm not even on social media and I think it's, it's insulting to you I honor you too much to go on social media and ask you for money for prayer please listen I, I want to say this you know that I'm a man of integrity and this also, let me use the opportunity to say it on behalf of any a man and woman of God that is a person of integrity. When you listen to a man's message, it gives you an idea of their convictions, what they can do and what they cannot do. I, 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 I will never, never go by God's grace. God has blessed me with several people who continue to bless and support what we represent all over the world and I am profoundly grateful for their partnership. Please and please, if you want to partner with the ministry, you want to bless me, there are designated channels. I am grateful, uh, but so that your seeds don't enter um, wrong hands and have people take advantage of you. 
millions of naira thousands of dollars have been uh, extracted by several people in the name of uh, you know all kinds of things there are even people who have supposedly written publications uh, as Joshua Selman it's unfortunate uh, you know it's come to my notice also that people have written books purporting to be Joshua Selman when a book is out we have that influence and we'll let people know by God's grace we have lots of things out I know that God has granted me a measure of influence and I'm grateful for it and many people uh, can leverage on it for their own advantage provided you do not hurt people provided you do not scam people is a terrible thing and I will assure you that we will continue to look out for these people and make sure that the social media as far as this ministry is concerned is safe for your participation so please do well connect with us on on our all our platforms for updates and then um, do well to spread the teachings the teachings are free let them go all over the world and then um, just let everybody know that I am grateful thank you so much for your love thank you so much for everything I ask, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you will bless our hearts. Amen. We declare that tonight Jesus will be glorified. Amen. Father, whilst your word comes, I pray that you will heal every sick body in this place. Amen. I pray that you will deliver every oppressed in this place. Amen. I pray that our lives will be thoroughly transformed. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Therefore, Lord, we decree and declare that our hearts are opened, open to learn, open to receive, and we declare that in all of this, you remain glorified in our lives, you remain glorified in this city, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. God bless you. Please be seated. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for the privilege and the opportunity to bring the word of God. I want to appreciate the entire leadership of this great um, commission. I also want to honor the bishops here present and all the servants of God. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. I want to share a few things tonight I'm just trusting to walk with time and my heart is burdened because there's, there's a lot that the Lord would have me share and I, I just trust that God will grant grace I believe that conferences like these are moments of transformation the Bible says now the Lord is that spirit and it says where the spirit of the Lord is there is liberty then he says we all with faces unveiled beholding him as in a mirror he says we are changed from one level of glory even to the other hallelujah it matters that we understand the word of God it matters that we understand the principles of the kingdom because our dominion and our walking in victory depend on one our knowledge of God and number two a thorough understanding of his ways the victory of the believer please just reduce or just just let it be if you can't find anything please let's not let's minimize distraction um, so I believe that the Lord is going to grant us grace and help us to understand scripture. It is important that we study scripture because the Bible represents the boundary of God's commitment to man. 
God is not committed to man outside of the provisions allocated and allowed by scripture and that from a child thou hast known the holy scripture the Bible says which is able to make thee wise unto salvation and so the knowledge of the scripture exposes us to God's methodologies we are able to understand his way of doing things and when we sustain the grace to engage accordingly then our lives become a reflection of what he has said many years ago I had a vision and in that vision I saw a great door it was a very big door God was opening me up to a thorough understanding of the value of the Word of God I saw an ancient door and the Spirit of the Lord took me close to that door and then I found out that that door was made up of other smaller doors and I noticed in that vision the doors were opening and closing opening and closing and each time the door opened light will come out of it and then it will close open again and light would come out of it and I noticed on every door a scripture was written and then the Holy Spirit began to let me know that those doors represented revelations and different dimensions of God remember Jesus said I am the door and so every dimension of spiritual reality that you lay hold of the light that comes is the grace that empowers you to walk in the reality of that scripture that means whatever you propose to know if you do not have the grace to demonstrate its validity it is not yet life to you it says they are life not to those that seek them those that find them are we blessed praise the Lord all over the world believers seek to walk in victory when you ask the average believer he will tell you that he wants a consolation to his Christian experience and while it is true that we do not serve the Lord and we do not seek him because of things in God's economy he so designed that somewhere along the line as you walk with him you get to a point where your life begins to bear fruit are we together John 15 and verse 8 he says herein is my father glorified when ye bear much fruit so shall ye be my disciples so he desires that somewhere in our Christian experience we begin to produce results that become an evidence to unbelievers that we are serving a living God as well as become consolations to us but then results in this kingdom of all sorts they do not just come because we desire them they come when we have access to the requisite level of spiritual illumination Jesus wept over Jerusalem the Bible says he lamented and he said oh Jerusalem Jerusalem if you have known even in this your day the things that pertain unto your peace he says but now they are hid from you so there are things that pertain unto our peace there are things that pertain unto our growth there are things that pertain unto our efficiency and I'm trusting that God is going to grant grace as we explore a few keys along the theme of this conference I read carefully through the letter that um, was written and given to me from the ministry and I could discern the passion of this church for revival for the move of God to see that the purposes of God are birthed in a territory like this and by the grace of God and with all humility I am a student of revival I have studied the moves of God across almost every continent I've had the honor and the privilege of meeting a few of these people and I've heard firsthand from them what God did in their days because it is a desire that we become a continuation are we together now a continuation so that it will no longer be fables that we were told but we will be able to prove the validity of God to a generation otherwise there will come another generation that knew not Pharaoh 
and they will now begin to detest the things that we cherish and hold as sacred there must be a dimension of spiritual reality that must be preserved otherwise a whole generation will come and detest God God will become like a historic material we will just know that once upon a time there were people in Enugu who were passionate about God once you see let me tell you this the way the devil destroys a generation is not to cause a catastrophe in one day or one year the way the devil destroys a generation is to study its system of continuity please understand this when the devil finds out that the fathers are so covenanted to God they will not backslide he will give up on the fathers but he will make sure the bridge that translates that knowledge and that passion from the fathers to the children is caught respectfully speaking this is what has destroyed the West the American nations and all of that their grandmothers and their grandfathers those we call God's generals while they were there in the field doing the things they were doing the devil distracted them with the here and now and they did not think of a system of continuity are we together so Satan gave up on the parents and went to grow with the children now the children are the presidents they are the governors and they are very vocal and unashamed about their desire for the absence of God in their community it is not enough that we know God we must study the system allocated for the transference of these things in ancient times you would see that the Lord would instruct the fathers he said write it on tablets when your children ask you why are you doing this tell them once upon a time something happened like this hallelujah in every generation God seems to find a few people now I don't know why it is a few people but I may be able to attempt tonight why it seems like only very few people are able to qualify to host certain superior dimensions of the grace the power the glory the wisdom of God within the context of a generation so it looks like you have people just being average in their work with God church goers here and there loving God serving and then every once in a while you will find men and women who press exceptionally into the things of God and as a result of that encounter they come up with anointings and graces and very very striking dimensions of God and those individuals become the, the signposts they become representations of God's desire within that dispensation and then when those people leave usually people go down again and then they wait and one day Kathleen Kuhlman will come up then one day a Smith Wigglesworth will come up and then one day so on and so forth even in the history of this nation and I believe the history of this city when you study from a spiritual standpoint you will find out that scattered across your history were moments when certain individuals came with fire and power and they commanded dimensions of revival and fire there was such an awakening within that territory and it is my goal in this conference that I will share with us a bit that the Lord has taught me about preserving the fire of revival within a territory it is possible that men can capture the realities of God and preserve it transgenerationally it does not have to be lost with the absence of a generation are we blessed already now I, I am sent to the body of Christ as you would have observed I make it a point of duty to not criticize the body of Christ it is not my culture at all to talk about maybe churches or say anything negative no I am sent to the body and one of the requirements to carry a grace that is for the body is you must love the body if you love God and hate the body you are still defaulting you must love God and love his body are we together and I have found out that respectfully speaking one of the reasons why many people are very weak spiritually 
why many people do not host certain dimensions of God. Among many reasons, there is a theology that has been sold, especially this generation. And the theology is that there is no participation and there is no price required to host God. And it looks like a well-meaning theology. The Bible is a prophetic book. You can make it speak anything you want it to say. So that, that, that indoctrination that um, God can use anybody he wants to use, it doesn't matter who has created a justification for laxity in the body of Christ. So people do not have the passion to press towards the things of God because it looks like there is no profit in pressing into God. Let me tell you this, people of God, not everything in the kingdom is a gift. If everything were a gift, what then is the reward for obedience? Are we together? Deuteronomy 28, when you read from verse 1, it says, And it shall come to pass if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord, to do and to observe all that I command you this day. Then it begins to list, it says, Then you shall be exalted above the nations of the earth, and this blessing shall come upon you and overtake you. There is always a participatory condition that guarantees certain dimensions of the presence of God. And I think that this, this understanding needs to be restored to the body of Christ. There is a price for spiritual power. There is a price to host God. There is a price to carry an anointing for a generation. There is a real price. It's a non-negotiable price. It's not a price that can be politicized. It's not a price that can be manipulated by emotions. The price is fixed. You either obtain the grace. What God gives is the grace to pay that price. Listen, remember when the mother of James and John came to meet Jesus to negotiate positions for them because the way they saw the invincibility of Jesus and they suspected that one day this man would dethrone Herod and he would become the king of the Jews. And so before that would happen, James and John liars with their mother to buy a comfortable political position for them. So in case Jesus dethroned Herod, that they will sit at the left and right. And so the mother comes with this request, Dear Jesus, would you grant that after you are done with this Roman people, grant that my sons will sit at your left and right. Jesus never said the space was not vacant. He said, here is the condition. Can you drink? Jesus is talking now, not an angel. Can you drink of my cup? Number one. Number two, can you be baptized? Notice that one works within you and one works outside you. Conditions. Can you drink of my cup? And then can you be baptized with my baptism? There is a price for the power of God. You don't just tell somebody from a wheelchair, stand up. that they shall lay hands on the sick. Remember that many people taught us that it's costly to experiment like this in the Bible. One time Jesus went to the Mount of Transfiguration and the disciples wanted to use the opportunity to cash in on that moment and make a name for themselves. And they did not look for a mild case that was manageable. They got an epileptic patient and then they gathered the people and they prayed and prayed and prayed and nothing happened. They were embarrassed, their egos were strong, and when Jesus came, they said, why couldn't we cast this out? Remember again the sons of Sceva. They came and gathered someone who was a demoniac, and they said, in the name of Jesus, whom Paul preaches, that's the real Jesus. You thought he would just show up because his name was called, and the demons replied, Jesus we know, Paul we know. He says, who are you? Where do you stand in the spirit? I do not see the scar that represents your passing through the school of the spirit. And the Bible says, those demons beat them and drove them out. Please hear me. You don't just speak and people's lives change because the Bible said, no, 
No. We will continue to mock ourselves and propose spiritual things we do not have the grace to defend if we are unwilling to pay a real, solid spiritual price. The centurion comes to Jesus and is making a request over his daughter. And Jesus said, I respect you. You're a noble man. I will go with you to your house. And the centurion said, no. I am a man under authority. In other words, I understand government and the implication of authority. You too, you are a man under authority. I'm under the authority of the government of Rome. And there is a level of power that I have by reason of that authority. I can tell one, go, and he will go. And if he does not go, the authority that backs me will come to address that situation. And Jesus said, I have not found such revelation. Who mentored you? Who taught you this? That our exploits in the kingdom is based on the government we submit to. Where did you find this revelation? We really appreciate you for watching our videos. Like, comment, share, and subscribe. Thank you.